So if you haven't seen the automation side of a security analyst job, then you need to watch this video. Oftentimes when you're working in an analyst role in cybersecurity, your main responsibilities would be dealing with alerts, tickets, incident response, vulnerability management, and threat hunting. But for some security analysts, you also get the exposure to the development side, specifically on automations. So in this video, I'll show you guys what it actually looks like when we develop an automation on Splunk Soar. I'll be going through from start to finish, beginning from a simple search on a particular set of data to creating an automation playbook that will automatically run everything. This will be somewhat a longer tutorial video, so let's get right into it. So let's lay out the design of our example automation. We'll be using logs from a particular index on Splunk. Then we can format the logs to requirement and save it as a report. In order to connect this report to the Soar platform, we'll need to configure a Splunk app over there. This will allow us to create a schedule to generate an input from the report and feed it into our automation playbook. This playbook will perform some extra data processing and send out a prompt for us to action. Now, if you're just a regular analyst, this entire process would just be a black box. All you get is the final prompt from the automation to select an action. But we're more than that, right? We're keen to learn how the background processes work. So let's start off with the first step. Okay, so we're starting from scratch. So that means we've got to generate some CSV data. Here we have an example of some names and URLs. So the names are randomly generated, so it's not a real person. And if you're following along this video, then you can have any type of CSV data. This is just an example. We can start off by by creating a new index. So I'll be naming this example index and I'll leave the raw data size as zero for the maximum and the retention days as seven. So there's no specific reason for this. This is just an example. What I'm gonna do now is just add data and click upload. So here we can see, we can just select the source. So we can just drag and drop the CSV file and hit next. Okay, so we can just hit next all the way. And let's just find the index that we created. So example index here and hit review and just click submit. All right, so now we can go to the search and let's see if the data went through. So let's type in index equals example underscore index. And here we can see the CSV data that we've uploaded. And we can see the name and the URL fields here, which is exactly what we need. So let's put it in a table. All right, so now we have the exact representation of what we were seeing on the Excel on Splunk. What we can do now is just create a new report. So I'll just click save as and click report. I'll name it as example underscore report. So now we can go into searches, reports and alerts window and we can just double check on the report. We can go into edit and change the report. So for example, let's just say the earliest time I wanna change it to the last 24 hours. So I'll just do minus 24H at H. Now we can see the changes has been made and it's saying the last 24 hours. Okay, so the next step is connecting this report to Splunk Soar. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is go into the apps page on Splunk Soar. We can see here we've got a couple of apps already configured. So if you haven't configured the Splunk app, it'll show up under unconfigured apps. But I'll run through how you guys can configure the app here. So we can just do a search on Splunk. You can see here I've already created an example asset here just to prepare for this video. So let's go into that one. Okay, so the first tab under asset info, everything here would be automatically configured already. So we just have to go to the asset settings. All right, so a couple of things here to add. So when you set up your Splunk, you have to put in the host name here, the port, the username and password. And the next important thing to set up is the command for query to use with on poll. So you need to set it as safe search. And the next thing is put in the report name under this field here. So it will be example underscore report. Make sure to add the double quotations. And then let's test the connectivity to make sure that it's properly set up. And here we can see it's successfully connected. So that's good. Now we can go into ingest settings. This tab here basically sets up the report in terms of how it gets ingested. We can set up the schedule and the labels in this particular tab. And if we hit poll now, it's just gonna run the report. So let's set the maximum containers to let's say five. And we have an error here. It wouldn't be a development work if there's no errors. All right, so it says HTTP 400 bad request. So this probably means that there's something wrong with the permissions. So let's go back into the report and we can see that the sharing is private. So let's go into edit and edit permission. I'm going to select everyone for read and admins for write only. So that's within the app. And now we can see the report has been shared within the app. So let's go back to Soar and hit pull now. Cool, so now we can see it's created five containers. So the next thing we gotta do is go into the queue. So whenever a report has been pulled, it would just land in the queue here 
which allows the analyst to look into the event and do the investigations there. And here we can see the names of all of the events has been configured to be example test. So that was from the previous configuration that I've done. So let's look at an example test. Here we can see the recent activity is empty because there's nothing going on right now. And if we go into the artifacts, we can see the field values. Here we can see the name and URL has been generated. And if we go into the second event, we can see the same thing, name and URL. And here you might be thinking that it's generating one user per event and that might cause an issue. And you're 100% right, because let's say if you have 100 users, that means there's 100 events that's gonna get generated. So that might create a bunch of congestion or noise and it might bury other events that show up. So I guess the ideal solution here is to clump all of the names and URLs into one single event. So what we can do here is go back to the report search and do some edits. So the idea is to put the name and URL into a JSON format. The purpose is to easily split them when we ingest it into SOAR. So let's format the name and the URL into a particular string so it looks like a JSON format. And let's clean up the fields. So let's do fields minus name URL. All right, so now we can see this is exactly what we need, but the rows are still separated. So we need to clump them up into one single event. So let's do stats values brackets json as json all right so now we can see the value under statistics is one so now we just have one event only all right let's save this new search into the report let's go back to the configuration all right i'm gonna do some extra configuration here before we move on this is just to show you guys how you can configure the container names so i'm gonna type in this is a test all right let's go back to ingest settings so i'll do the same thing i'll set the maximum containers as five so you guys can see the change Okay, so now we can see it's only created one container. Let's go into it, click on artifacts, and now we can see the entire list of all of the names and URL pairs in JSON format. So the next step is to create an automation playbook on SOAR. So let's go to the home page and click on playbooks and then create playbook. And I'll click on automation. So here everything's empty except for a start and end. Let's rename this to example underscore test. Hit save and let's put this as events and just hit save. Type in the comment as update and I'm gonna reuse it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is the test for the input. And what I mean by that is to see if I can print out the JSON. So I'll type in, check if this works. And this is a variable. So let's put in artifacts. I believe the name is called JSON. So let's see if we have a field that's automatically generated here. All right, so he hasn't generated. So let's just pick a random one and replace that with JSON. So now we have the format block done. So what this format block does is it allows you to format the string to whatever you want. So the next thing we gotta do is to add the formatted string into the notes. So let's pull in the utility block and I'll name this title as check if this works. Content, I'll set the formatted data and then just join it to the end. Now we click save. All right, so in order to run this playbook on the container, we need to click on playbook debugger. Let's click on the scope to all artifacts and we need to find the event ID. So let's go back to the container and we can see the event ID is up the top, 4917. Let's copy that and drop that down here and just hit test. So it's saying that it's finished successfully. So let's go back to the container. And here we can see the recent activities that the playbook has run. And if we go into notes, we can see that's added a note here. All right, so let's say in this particular example automation, we want to filter out the names that has accessed Google. So one method I wanna show you guys is through custom function. So we can just go back to the home page and click on custom functions. So a custom function allows us to code in Python so we can do pretty much whatever we want. So let's name this example test and let's add an input. I'm gonna name it as input list. So this is the entire JSON input and the output is going to be a list of all the names that has Google. So what we can do here is just do an example print to see if we are getting our JSON input correctly. So let's type in phantom.debug and then I'm gonna put in input is working. Make sure to add the brackets, dot format, input underscore list. So let's hit save. I'm gonna put update in the comment and reuse. 
Okay, so if we go back to the playbook, we can just add the custom function in. It'll be under utility, and we can search the custom function name here, example test. And we're just gonna input the same thing that we put in the format block. Yep, and just hit done and hit save. So let's do the same thing with the playbook debugger. And here we can see that we've printed out the entire JSON list. And this is exactly where we can debug our code. And here we can see that it seems to be a list within a list. So the first thing we need to do is to go back to the custom function and select the first index. So I'll put in my list equals input underscore list and select the first index, which is the zero index. And for entry in my list, let's look at what an entry looks like. Let's copy this name URL pair here and paste it in the comment. So here we can just easily visualize the reference. Okay, so let's just grab the name out of the dictionary pair. Same thing with the URL. Then I'm going to create my output list. So that's gonna be the list containing all of the users that has accessed Google. So if the URL equals google.com, I'm going to append the entry to the list. So now let's change the debug to Google list and replace that with my output list. I'm going to check this and let's go back to the automation and hit test. Okay, so now we have a bunch of errors here and it seems like it's relating to string indices must be integers. So let's go back to the custom function and let's see what's going on. Uh, here we can see the mistake is actually in the format. So this entire entry is an entire string. So it's not in a dictionary format. So let's change that. So what we have to do here is just split the string so we can extract the name and the URL. So let's do the name first. Okay, so let's do a quick check by doing phantom.debug and then let's type in here dot format and let's put in the name here so this is just to double check if I've done the splitting correctly alright so now we can see that we've done the splitting correctly let's go back and do the same thing with the URL so now we have the name and the URL extracted from the string let's remove that uncomment the if statement let's hit save and let's go back to the automation and test it. All right, so now we have all the names that has the Google URL. Now we need to go back to the custom function and set the output. So let's set it to Google underscore list for the name. And then we need to put that into the outputs dictionary and then set that as my output underscore list. Let's click on our custom function here and let's change the input of the format block as the output of our custom function, which is the Google underscore list and let's save that. Let's do a quick test. Okay, so now let's go back to the container and here we can see all the errors that we've done previously. And here in the latest note, we can see this is the one we've just done. Here we can see this is all the list of names that has Google in it. But this note here is not as pretty looking, so let's do some formatting. Let's go back to the automation here. And what we can do here is go into the format block. We need to remove the last part, which is Google underscore list. So it's just dot data. And now let's see if it formats properly. And here we can see it's presenting the new line correctly. All right, so now that we have all the information filtered out, let's say we wanna do some action on the Google URL. So what we can do here is to create a new block which will prompt the user whenever this particular automation runs. So I can select the user that's gonna be prompted and let's type in a message. This is an example prompt select yes to ban this user. So this is under the assumption that we have another app that allows us to ban a user. And let's put the variable here as all the list of users that access Google. And let's put in the question, select yes or no. Join that to the end and hit save. So let's go back to the playbook debugger and hit test. Now we can go back to the container. We can see under approvals, we have a new prompt. So from a regular security analyst view, this is usually what they see only. So I'm gonna select yes for this. All right, so now that we know the prompt works, so let's go back to the automation and do an example where we can filter out the yes responses. And I'll click the responses.0 equals yes. And then I'll add in a format block, which is gonna be a placeholder for an actual app that actually performs the action when you say yes. So let's say if an analyst response is yes, then this is gonna filter it out and then it's gonna trigger the app to block the user. So let's just mimic the app and create a note here. Users ban and hit save. So I'll click test, go back to the container. So now we have a new prompt and then let's just click yes. And here we can see 
example that if the user has been banned, then it will create a note here saying that we have blocked the users. All right, so the last thing we gotta do is just configure this automation to make it active. And then let's hit save. Okay, so the final thing to do is just to completely automate this entire process. What we can do here is go back to the app and we can set the report to be triggered on an interval or a schedule. So let's say we want to trigger it every half an hour. We can just add it here and select interval and put 30 minutes here. So I'm just going to hit poll now to simulate when it triggers. So this is going to be the background process every half an hour. And we can see it's already triggered the prompt here. So an analyst can just go into the container and look at all the details. So for example, we can see the prompt has been generated here. We can go into the artifacts. It has the same values as we did before. And we go into notes, we can see everything's already populated. And then under approvals tab, we can see the prompt here with all the details and we can just select yes. And in this particular case, it will just block the user. All right, so that's an example of how an automation works using Splunk and Sor. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.